For 30 years, he's been making films that have made people think. They've been controversial at times, but often it seems they've painted a picture about race relations in his country. Are you the man? No, you the man. Are you the man? From his 1989 classic, Do the Right Thing, to this year's Chirac. I will deny all rights. Spike Lee has never shied away from difficult themes. I will deny all rights. From black white tensions to black on black killings. His current message is about the proliferation of guns in America. But his current fear, something and someone else. We rented these chairs, director's chairs, just for this interview. Feels very comfortable. Do you actually use director's chairs when you're on set? I rarely sit when I'm on set, but uh, I have one if I choose to sit down. <laughs> When you're not sitting, are you standing right by the camera, or are you like right all around? All around. All around. But when the, when we're rolling, I'm next to the camera. So, but I, some, I go by the camera. I got stand by the monitors, which gives me because I shoot with more than one camera, so all the monitors are in front of me for each camera. Still, you've been doing this for what, 35? Well, early this, 80s when you really August started. This August 9th will be the. 30th anniversary of the first film, she's got to have it. Right. Still as excited to be behind or beside the camera as you were then? Yes. I have not lost any of that. That love for cinema, the excitement, and uh, wanting to tell new stories. Well, let me talk about the new story in a sense by reflecting back um, to, I guess, 89. Comparing 89, do the right thing, mm -hmm. and today in Chirac. Uh, in a way, they kind of frame your chronicling of the story of your country. How, how has America changed in that period? Well, we've had two terms of African American president, and uh, now it's getting scarier with the this Frankenstein monster named Donald Trump. So it's, it's very, it's dicey now, very dicey. Well, let me back you up on that by starting about the two terms of Obama. Mm -hmm. Did that make the difference that you had hoped it would? Yes, but I think that what we're seeing now is a reaction to the eight years of Obama, and it was evident how the Congress and the Senate, anything he tried to do, they blocked, and now they're trying to block the Supreme Court. Garland's trying to nominate, so everything he did, he was, it was like a blockade to stop him doing anything. But I do think, though, that history will tell as we move away from his, uh, his years in the White House that he's one of the greatest American presidents, presidents this country's had. That's well, what I believe. Well, when you believe that, what's the first thing you put after the fact that he was the first African American? What, what is it in terms of achievement that you will say? Again, I mean, we have to really have this, the, the space of history to really have a true evaluation of it, but I think that uh, just hope, and we'll never, we won't know too many years what, what, was, the, what was the effect on the people of America, not only just black folks, but just, I mean, we have young children who've never seen a white president. <laughs> you know, that's, that's big, you know? And so I think that the impact is, will be felt for many, many years. But you also got a lot of children, especially African-American children, mm -hmm. who have seen nothing but horror during those eight years, as you chronicle in, in Chirac. Well, I mean, the United States, the, of a president of any country can only do so much. And the stuff that was ha this happened in Chicago, Chicago's always been a big gang city. Go back to, you know, prohibition. Mm -hmm. But uh, violence is uh, America's apple pie. 99 Americans die every day due to gun violence a third of those being of, of suicide. So uh, we 
were seeing uh, the love of the gun in America. So what are you trying to tell us then in, in Chirac, which is really a movie about black on black gun violence? But it's, it's more than that. I think that it's a movie about violence in general. The story comes from the we, we, adaptation of uh, mm -hmm. Aristophanes' play, Lysistrata, was written, was written in 411 BC. And I think that for me, we wanted to one, shed the light on this problem, because it's not just Chicago, it's where I'm from, New York, Philadelphia, uh, Bodymore, Murderland, DC, Houston, South Central LA. And this, there's many things that can be done, but because of uh, the National Rifle Association, the gun manufacturers, you know, people are dying. And even common sense gun laws get, get knocked down. For example, if you're on, if you're on the, the no-fly list, that means that you cannot buy a ticket, an airplane ticket. We're, you know, we think that you're a terrorist, and we're not going to give you, we're not going to sell you an airplane ticket. Yet, that same person could go into any gun store in America, buy any assault weapon, so how do you change that? Like, how can you change that? You gotta keep fighting. Uh, but, but you've never had a president who has been this. Sir, can I just say something? My ancestors were slaves for hundreds of years. It took time. I hope it doesn't take that long, but you gotta keep fighting till, till these changes are, are made and you just can't roll over and say, well, it's never going to happen. I mean, uh, no change can be made if, if someone takes, has that, that mentality. Let, let me play the counter argument to you, the argument that the, 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 the gun owners and the, the, those, who don't want, those who don't want any change would say, well, listen, we can make those changes. It's not going to change the fact that kids in Chirac are still going to have access to guns. They'll yes, get yes, guns. Yes, it is, because I'll, I'll, I'll give you... Okay. An answer for your argument, sir. Not my argument. The, well, the no, argument you're playing you know, uh, Yeah. Chicago and the state of Illinois have very, very tough gun laws. So the guns that these kids, these young black men get in Chicago, they're not coming from Illinois or Chicago. They're coming from Indiana, which is a very lax gun laws. New York City. And you get caught with a gun in New York City, you go into jail. But those guns are coming from New York. They're coming from Georgia, Florida, Virginia. And so you, could, you have the state, you have a very, very stringent gun law, but if the neighboring states don't have it, the gun's gonna get into your, where you live in anyway. So I think it has to be uniform amongst the, all the states. Does white America care about the story you've just told in this movie? Yes, because uh, I'm not gonna make a generalization that, that Americans, white Americans don't care about black folks or Hispanics or gays. I'm not going to make that. I mean, that's what Trump would want to make you, would you feel that way, but all Muslims, let me add them. Because uh, I think we're not all as uh, enlightening as a Trump. <laughs> You know, I'm joking, but as a, as a Trump supporters. Why is it happening? Why is the Trump phenomenon happening? When you, I mean, Have you you're ever, a student of your country. You, you know it from a certain perspective okay. very well. But Have like, you ever so seen why this, this film happening? called A Face in the Crowd? No. Directed by Ilya Kazan, written by the great, great Bud Schilberg, starring Andy Griffith. This film was made in 1957. 1957, the year I was born. Everything in that film predicted a Donald Trump today. I'm not just an entertainer. I'm an influence, a wielder of opinion, a force, a force. Oh, if they ever heard the way that psycho really talks. They're mine. I own them. They think like I do. 
they're even more stupid than I am. <laughs> so I gotta think for them. Why is it happening? What does it say about America? The media. I mean, this is, I think, one of the worst things that ever happened in the United States of America or the world is reality TV. And he's a product of reality TV. Okay, so why? Like, like what did reality TV do to create put, that? Put the worst elements of us human beings on television and made it entertainment. So why couldn't you do something new on this now, on this phenomenon that seems to be, to be happening? Since this whole thing's happened, I've been to Germany. they like, Spike, what's happening? My friends, <laughs> I've been to England, London, England, like... I think people all over the world are looking at the United States and like, I use these three, three letters, WTF. <laughs> you know what that means? Oh, yeah. Yeah, That's we hear that here occasionally, too. <laughs> like, what? People are scratching their head all over the world. The United States is supposed to beacon of democracy and all this other stuff. And like, this clown is, might be president of the United States of America. I mean, I don't think anybody saw this coming. Some people think it's an act just to get the nomination. I mean, we've seen acts before to get nominations, well, and then it, they've it, kind it, of it become might, more moderate. It might have started out as an act, but it's not an act now. <laughs> this is serious business. And, I, and you could say the fate of the world depends on it. I said this before, but I'll repeat it. I, my wife and I, Tanya, gave a, a benefit for Barack's first term at our house. And it was crazy with the, the bomb dogs and the Secret Service and FBI. Whole block was in Manhattan, east side, was blocked off. And uh, during, everybody was inside. I went outside and saw the car and I saw the guy with the football. You know what the football is? Mm hmm. Nuclear codes. Yes. Do you, would, do you want Donald Trump to have the nuclear codes to the football? This is going to be over if that happens. How do, you feel about the, <coughs> how do you feel about the alternative? I mean, you're obviously an Obama person. Are no, you, a, I'm, are I'm, you I'm, a Clinton person? No, I'm supporting Bernie Sanders, my, my Brooklyn brother. But... It doesn't look good. So, so then what happens for you? Do you... Did I just talk about... Did you just hear me just say about the football? <laughs> <laughs> what do you think is going to happen? <laughs> it's, not, it's not like it's going to be a surprise who I'm going to vote for. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's a scary... I mean, it, I'm, yeah. we're joking now, but that is scary to me to have Donald Trump have the nuclear codes to the football. Let me, um, let me close out by going back to your work. Mm -hmm. You know, we talked earlier about the kind of line you can draw from do the right thing to Chirac. Mm -hmm. If one keeps that line going, <clears throat> where, does it, where does it go to? Where does it end up within, within our lifetimes? Well, Kurosawa made films to his early 80s. This Saturday, I'll be 59 years old, March 20th. I hope to make more films, tell more stories. That's, that's all I can say. And then it'll be left up to other people to, to write what they feel about my, my body of work. But you have hopes and dreams about what happens within, you know, your country, and, and, and within not, the African-American I mean, community. Just globally. I mean, I, yeah. I, 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 mean, I want but peace it, for everybody. And this whole, you know, this whole... It's God's earth, not just the United States of America. But are things better than they were when you did uh, do the right thing? Well, some cases, yes. Some cases, no. I mean, this is, things are not... 20 years, I mean, 89 to 2016, that's really, a, you know, that's not a, that long a time. So great, great changes don't happen overnight. That's just the way it is. So we're not, power is not going to just give up power. They don't, that's never happened. It's been a pleasure sitting in director's chairs with you. Thank you. Appreciate it. Thank you. And thank you for 
getting these, going to the prop house where we can brag from and was sitting in these chairs. Thank you. You got it.